Hello, welcome to the second video on probability. In this video, we look at some basic examples of probability density functions in real life, and some you might have seen before in a stat or a prob class, a probability class. And then we'll jump into some classic examples of questions from the connection between calculus and probability. Um, the first example um, probability density function is called an exponential density function. Here's the format of it. It is zero so long as x is less than zero. When x is greater than or equal to zero, it becomes an exponentially decaying function called ke to the minus kx, where k is anything that's greater than zero. The graph of this function looks like this, where it is zero, and then it goes up to k on the y-axis, and then it decays down exponentially all the way to infinity. This is uh, used in real life in many different instances. Here are some examples. Um, this is used when you're trying to figure out the lifespan of some electronic component or the duration of a, like, uh, like a battery or um, the duration of a, a telephone call, uh, the waiting time for anything, um, waiting at a doctor's office, um, when you have flights that come into an airport, airports use this kind of a function to help us measure the probability or the likelihood that measures the time um, between successive flight arrivals and departures um, in an airport. And so this is an exponential density function. It is a special type of probability density function. And remember the two properties of a probability density function. It either, um, number one, it must be uh, greater than or equal to zero. This function is, it's equal to zero, then it's greater than zero. Um, and also at the same time, the total area under the graph must be one. Now, Originally, it starts off as minus infinity into infinity, but um, this function zero up to zero. So we can just change the integral to be from zero to infinity because there's no need to integrate the function zero. There's no area there. All the area is coming when x is greater than zero. The antiderivative of ke to the negative kx. Well, whenever you integrate e to a multiplier on x, the antiderivative is the reciprocal of that multiplier times that same exponential. With us having that k there and the reciprocal of minus k is negative 1 over k, they cancel each other out. Um, officially, this is an improper integral, so we have to replace the infinity with the b and let b go off to infinity. But our antiderivative probably is best written as negative 1 over e to the kx. You know, with the negative exponent being on the putting it pushing it into the denominator, so we can more easily tell what happens as b goes to infinity. We'll put the b in, we'll put the zero in. Um, e to the zero in the denominator is a one, and as b goes to infinity, k is some positive constant, so it's going to be large. Um, e to uh, an inf infinite large number is infinitely large. Negative one cut into infinitely many pieces essentially is, is going to go to zero as b goes to infinity. With the double minus there, it is true that the total area is one. This is a probability density function, and we're going to use it later in, in a real life problem. The most famous probability density function is called the bell curve. Officially, the name is the normal, uh, normal density function. In the stack or prob class, you probably call it uh, normal density. Um, just normal distribution. But yeah, it's our bell curve. Uh, this particular drawing of the function is a standard bell curve. In general, the bell curve has two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. These are constants. And then the it has this form of an exponential function, e to the negative, um, basically variable squared. So it has the exponential decay as x gets large. Okay. What's normally done in a stat class is that you you uh, convert your bell curve into a standard bell curve by shifting using this formula to let z equal x minus the mean over sigma, and then you'll get what's called z scores. And um, if you um, 
do this transformation in the bell in the standard bell curve what happens is the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one if you ever had to look up values in the table on a um on in, in a stat book or use a computer to help you get the probability for the bell curve they're actually integrating this exponential function with the mean being zero and the standard deviation being one it simplifies the formula a little bit here's what the formula actually is so the table of values or the computer values are coming from integrating this particular function, which we can't do by hand because of the fact that it's um, e to the negative x squared. We don't have the ability to be able to integrate that using u sub without having an x multiplier. But it's called the standard normal curve. We're not going to do it in this class. I just want to make a tie-in for some of you who've taken a calc, I mean a stat, I mean a probability or a stat class. I'm sure you've seen the bell curve before, and I want to tie it into the calculus. What's going on with the bell curve is we're integrating to find probability, like with any probability density function, but I wanted to show you the exact value of the function and, and just to get you something familiar from, uh, from a previous class, hopefully. And so um, now let's look at some examples of a standard calculus probability question. Here's a probability density function that is zero for all x's that are not between one and four, including one and four. Um, when you are between one and four, including one and four, you are a parabola that opens upward. Uh, that's some constant times x squared. The leading term there is x squared. Uh, letter A, can we verify that this function is a probability density function? Um, remember the two properties. Is it true that the uh, function is always greater than or equal to zero? Is it possible for this function ever to go negative? And so the graph of this function is zero. Um, the, the placement of the, I got to redo this graph. The place, placement of that y axis is off. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's it. At, at x equals one is when it um, then becomes alive, becomes that parabola. When x is 1, y is 0, yeah? And then um, once you get to 4, the function goes back to being dead again, back to 0. So yes, it is true that f of x is always greater than or equal to 0 for all x. And the main thing, of course, is, is the total area equal to 1? And so we'll integrate the function. Not from minus 50 to infinity. I mean, officially, that's what the definition says, but that's what the property says, but, but no... The function is dead. The function is zero for most of that. The only time the function is non-zero is between one and four. So that's where our integral would be. And just distribute, you get a polynomial, you know, power rule in reverse, antiderivative, plug in the bounds. Hopefully the integration isn't too much trouble for you. If you want to pause it, um, you know, and see if you can match the answer that I get, um, we end up with, yes, it does equal to one. That two over 27 is in there on purpose because the integral um, without it is 27 over two and it has to be equal to one so yes it is a probability density function and we can do the things that we do in this class with this function we can calculate probability we can calculate the mean calculate the median um for right now though in the time that we have left let's just calculate probability what's the likelihood that x takes on values between two and three that's what that symbol p parentheses and then um x is between two and three that's what it means Probability corresponds to area. The chance that you take on values between two and three is the integral from two to three. We've already integrated it. Now, instead of plugging a four and a one in, we plug a three and a two in. Work out the details with the fractions, a little nasty there, but uh, 23 over 81 is the final answer. Okay. Um, if you go to a computer or something, you try to figure out, like, to get a feel for what that number is, that's 28%. There's a 28% chance. 28% uh, of the area is between 2 and 3. Okay. All right, great. Um, yeah, let's go one more example. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I know it's getting close to the 10-minute mark, but uh, here's another function. Kx squared from 2 to 5 and 0 otherwise What's the value of k that would make this a probability density function? It's a parabola, right? So we don't want it to be a negative coefficient on x squared, so make sure that k is greater than or equal to zero. 
If it's a negative coefficient on x squared, then it's going to dip below and, and violate rule number one for being a um, probability density function. When it comes to total area, we're just integrating, but not from minus infinity to infinity like the property has because this function is zero for most of that. The function is only non-zero between two and five, so that's what we're really integrating, two to five. Um, x to the three over three, put the five in, 125, put the two in, you get eight. 125 take away eight is 117. That's actually divisible by three. Um, if you add up the digits in a number and you get a sum that's divisible by three, then the entire number is divisible by three. Um, this number is uh, 39. So K is equal to one over 39. So you set the area, you set the integral equal to one, and therefore you can then solve for what the constant should be, like the two over 27 in the previous question. All right, so that's um, some examples, some basic common um, probability density functions and two basic examples of uh, standard questions from, from uh, probability and calculus class. All right, in the next video, we'll look into some more complicated examples and uh, we'll be able to look at, uh, let's start calculating the mean. Let's start calculating the median. And so we'll do that next video. Sorry, this video ran over 10 minutes, but... That's it. Uh, thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Comment down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.